So today what I want to cover is, uh, you know, the origin of structure, where it started from, um, you know, the purpose of it. Uh, we'll talk about different deployments. There are going to be some slight differences between uh, the cloud and the on-prem versions, uh, so we'll definitely watch out for that. Um, today we will be focusing on cloud, um, but the good news is if you're on-prem, everything we've got in cloud is, is already on-prem, so um, it'll make it nice and easy for everybody to follow along. Um, so we'll start with the basics, and then once we've got those basics, we'll start um, going on to some practical use cases. Um, so hopefully something that uh, that looks like what you're doing in Jira today. Um, so yeah, let's just jump right in. Where did structure start? <laughs> um, so the origin of structure is actually this uh, Jira ticket. So uh, Jira Server 446 created in 2004. Um, somebody suggested that we should be able to show sub issues um, being or being contained within um, their own sub issues. So like we want to have this idea of you know an epic has stories underneath or a story has subtasks underneath and different things like this. And um, Atlassian said they weren't going to do it. Um, so this basically is the genesis of uh, of structure. Um, took a little while until we got to Structure 1.0 in uh, in 2011, and here we are, 11 years later in uh, in 2022, and we are on Structure version eight. Um, cloud released a little bit later, um, so cloud is definitely still um, playing catch up. But um, everything that we have in the on-prem version is basically committed to on cloud, so we will um, reach full feature parity. Um, but uh, as new things are still being added to the on-prem deployments, it's kind of a game of, uh, of catch up. So, um, you know, what is structure good for? Um, I feel like this is kind of a hard question to answer. Um, I've got a lot of examples here for different things. And these are, these are very common things um, that I see, but it's very, very open-ended. Uh, just like you can use a spreadsheet for many, many different things, you can use structure for a lot of different things. Um, I often think of it as just a tool for organizing uh, that work in Jira however you want it. So whether it's trying to visualize at the top level, you know, I want to see how everything rolls up, how everything kind of organizes under this one, you know, top level item, uh, maybe trying to understand what we're doing for this quarter or this year or, or whatever kind of, um, you know, high level objective we're trying to roll up to. Um, definitely see a lot of people using it for tracking ongoing progress. We want to see what's going on in flight. This is something Structure does particularly well because it always has real-time up-to-the-minute updates. Um, of course, organizing issues into hierarchies, that was basically the ticket there um, that Jira said they weren't going to do. And then, of course, it's also a place for, you know, Structure's not just a place for viewing information. It can be a place where we're actively working, updating uh, issues. Um, and then, of course, aggregating data when we're trying to roll up information to a very high level, we want um, to understand, you know, how many story points, how much uh, estimated work, you know, um, all these different things, um, because if we've got 10,000 items in the structure, we're not going to read all of them, we want to roll that information up to one top level item. Um, and then, of course, um, identifying outliers. I find because structure is um, very rigid, very organized, you know, we'll have a JQL that says items that match exactly these criteria. Um, and when we find, oh, well, there should be an item in here. Maybe it's missing a field, maybe it's uh, missing a date, um, all these other things. It often forces us to uh, to kind of clean house. We'll, we'll notice these outliers, we'll notice these mislabeled, miscategorized issues. Um, and then of course, we can coalesce data um, from multiple different fields into one thing. Uh, this is the idea of weighted shortest job first in safe, um, or maybe a rice calculation. Um, there's a lot of different variations on this, and I'll, I'll try to touch on that a little bit more. Um, I did already mention that we have, uh, you know, these different deployments. Again, today we're going to be focusing on structure for Jira Cloud. Um, all of these examples should work on uh, on server and DC. So no matter which instance you're on, you should be able to follow along. Um, you know, the looks are a little bit different, um, but, um, you know, all of the functions are, are functionally the same. Um, and yeah, as I said, for most cases, we can assume things are going to work on both. And then uh, my one warning here is uh, if you are on cloud, and, and I know we're going to be talking about cloud a lot today, if you are on the wiki, please note that the default is data center and server. So if you go to the our wiki and, and you click on structure, it's going to assume you mean structure data center and server, because that is the one that we've had for a longer time. So you definitely just going to want to click that drop down and switch yourself to, uh, to cloud to make sure you're looking at the right documentation. 
So let's start with uh, with the basics. So the um, the ultimate uh, you know basic thing about structure is generators. Generators are the rules that we use to build the structure. And here I have five different generators laid out. They're actually numbered one through five. Um, and it's not really important, um, but these actually do happen in this order. So um, first we're inserting, then we're extending, then we're filtering, and then we're grouping, and then we're sorting the final result. Um, so these, these happen in this order. Um, I generally think of it as, as from top to bottom with kind of the exception of the, uh, of the inserter here. Um, and we don't need to have one of these. You know, we can have multiple filters. We can have multiple groupers. We can have multiple sorters. There's a lot of different ways of mixing and matching these, but I just wanted to um, kind of show one of each. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm inserting epics and then I'm extending those uh, uh, stories underneath the epics um, and then, you know, grouping them into their individual sprints. And, uh, and sorting them by rank. So there's a lot of different ways that we can kind of mix and match these different rules to create interesting structures. So um, let's go over some basic terms. Uh, we already talked about generators. The other one worth mentioning is transformations. Um, transformations happen after generators. So we can think of generators as building the structure and then transformations as transforming it or changing it afterwards. Um, columns are going to be either JIRA fields or calculated attributes. Um, we can basically think of it as if it's not a JIRA field, it is almost definitely a calculated attribute. Those are basically the only two things. Um, and then when I say view, I mean a collection of columns. Um, views are not tied to any particular structure. So um, this means if I create a collection of columns, um, you know, maybe a ID story points due date or something like that. I can apply that to any set of issues on any structure. Um, so it's very, very flexible. And then level is this idea of how far away we are from the insert. Um, for our extenders, we're going to be talking about which levels they're working on. Um, and this will become important later. And then aggregation. Um, anytime we see this sigma, um, this uppercase Greek letter, um, we know that we're doing a, uh, a sum. And this will work on basically any um, numerical field. Um, we should be able to, uh, to aggregate it. But um, yeah, enough of the, the theory and the slideshow and all this. Let's actually jump in and, uh, and build some structures. So I have a sprint reporting structure over here. I wanted to start here because I think of this as a very, very simple um, structure. I know this view might not look simple to uh, to all of us, um, but uh, we will start at the beginning. But I wanted to start from here um, just to talk about when things get messy, how do we clean them up? So I've got the basic view. This is the collection of columns here. Um, and if I revert this, I'm going to go back to the original basic view, which is always going to be key summary and progress. So I've, I've simplified the view here. Um, you know, I've, I've basically deleted all those columns. As soon as I want to add new columns, I can just go over here and start to add um, some new things. Um, as I mentioned, these generators are the rules that build the, uh, the structure. So if I want, I can delete all of these generators and we can just uh, go to an empty structure. So if we're starting from scratch, we're, uh, we're opening up a, a blank structure. This is where we expect to start. And there are basically two places we can start. Um, the presets are definitely a nice place to uh, to get started, but I want to explain these one by one. So I'm going to use um, the individuals. The only difference is the preset is going to let us add multiple generators at once. By adding them piece by piece, I'm just doing them one at a time so we can explain um, what's going on. So basic insert is going to give us, um, you know, a little bit more of a graphic user interface. If we want to go with that, you know, we can start to ask some questions, you know, using the UI. Um, being a little bit more familiar, I would definitely, um, you know, choose the JQL. Um, I hope folks are familiar with JQL. Um, so we'll say something like this. I've got my project Mars and my type is equal to story. I want to grab this. So now I get a flat list of a bunch of stories. Um, from here, um, we can do a lot of different things. Um, maybe we want to sort the list by rank. Um, when we sort by rank, we're going to get this moving items in the structure will update the ranks. So now I've changed the list here. Um, I might want to also group them by sprint. That's what I was doing before. Um, so now we've got these um, grouped by sprint. I can see each item. Um, but now if they're grouped by sprint, I probably want to try to understand, you know, how much work I have in each sprint. So I'm using original estimate here. 
So if I grab original estimate, I can see how much work is assigned to each individual item, but I don't have anything at the sprint level. Um, to do that, I'd want to sum over sub items. And again, you know, we'll see that sigma column. Um, and now it's rolling up. So I can see my active sprint has about two weeks worth of work. My next sprint has a little bit less than two weeks worth of work. And then the sprint after that has a little bit more. It looks like three weeks worth of work. So maybe I'm a little bit overloaded here. Maybe, um, you know, this big task should be moved into the following sprint. And now, you know, I've kind of pushed this down. Now this one's a little bit more than two weeks. Maybe I've kind of overloaded this sprint. Maybe it needs to go down into the backlog. And we can see up here, I've made two different changes. So I've assigned the issue to a sprint and I've changed the rank. Um, and this is what I mean by, you know, we can kind of stack these rules and, and use them in tandem is I can add more different groupers, different uh, extenders, things like that. And they are going to work together. So if I add a fixed version here, now I'm grouping um, by the fixed version. Uh, it looks like I don't have a, uh, a fixed version set up. So everything is getting grouped into the, uh, into the no version. But, um, you know, so maybe that one doesn't actually make any sense. But I can also do something like group by assignee. So now um, I've got my assignee and then my sprint. And of course, these are going to execute in order. So if I flip them, now I've got sprint and then assignee. So I can see who's working on what and how much work they have assigned. So it looks like Mario's got this one two-day item and I've got a little bit more than a week. So not quite an even split as to um, you know, the work going on in our current sprint. Uh, and it looks like the next one is even worse. Elena has one hour worth of work and I have one week. So um, you know, maybe we need to do a little bit better job of our resource balancing here. The other thing is when I make changes, um, I can change multiple things at once. So I move this item over here. I assign it to Nick and I assign it to this sprint. So I make, and I'm also changing its rank. So I made three different changes, reassigned, moved to sprint and changed rank. So all of those are, uh, are valid all at once. And of course I can turn any of these off at any time. So I can say, um, you know, I don't want you to be able to reassign the uh, assignee by moving them from one group to another. And so now this is no longer a valid change um, because I still have permission to edit these fields, I can still update, I can still click over here on assignee and, and you know, change this to a different person, that's still a valid change. I just can't do this drag and drop. Um, this is no longer allowed. So I, I don't have um, this turned on. It is turned on by default for all um, generators. So I generally leave it on. It's generally, you know, nice to just have that ability to, uh, to do that, the drag and drop. But um, yeah, let's move on to our next example. Um, uh, Nick, just a quick yeah, uh, question. Uh, so we have our estimation here, work estimation show as original estimates. What happens if we use story points instead? Ah, well, uh, nothing because my story points are empty in this project. So um, I don't have um, story points set up here, um, but um, it would work functionally the same. Just like any numeric column, my story points has the sum over sub items, but summing up nothing is still going to be nothing. Um, I think in my next one, I, I have uh, I have some story points set up. So, um, so maybe we can touch on that in the next one. So I'm going to grab a new structure. This one happens to, I think, have some stuff in it. So I'm just going to delete all of that. And now we're back at, a, uh, at an empty view. Um, so from here, um, I can start um, inserting some items. So I might um, do a different insert here and say, um, you know, my project is cloud and my type equals epic. So now I'm grabbing the epics from the cloud project. And I think I have story points here. I might have story points here. I do have some story point values in this project here. Um, so from here, I might want to um, extend um, show those items underneath the uh, the epic. Um, so now I've got um, you know my stories underneath, and then I can go a level further and extend down to those subtasks. Um, oh, it looks like I don't have any subtasks right here, but that's fine. Um, so if I want to maybe make this multiple different projects, you know, we'll just change the JQL here really slightly and then say, I'm also going to insert my Mars project. So now I'm inserting multiple different projects 
and we see that there isn't anything underneath my Mars epics. They don't have any child stories. Uh, maybe this becomes a little bit more clear if I group this by project. So now I'm grouping this by project, and we can see my Mars project, no sub-items. My cloud project has a lot of sub-items. Um, this is actually a function of my Mars project happens to be a team-managed project, and my cloud project happens to be a company-managed project. For almost all cases, we don't really care. Um, you know, custom issue types, custom uh, you know, links and different project types are all going to play very, very nicely. The one exception is because on the back end, they're extended slightly different, we have this team managed project hierarchy. So as soon as I do this, it's going to extend my epics and my subtests as one thing. And now my Mars project is getting all of those stories and subtasks underneath. Um, but um, from here, we might, uh, you know, try to add some additional levels of grouping depending on what we have set up. Um, last time I tried to do fixed version, I was getting a little bit ahead of myself. I believe this one actually has um, my fixed version set up. And now you can see um, I've got my fixed version on top. Again, I probably want this in the opposite. So I'll set my individual project. Oh, it looks like Mars does not have a fixed version, but cloud does have a fixed version. Um, and again, you know, these fields are going to be um, editable um, and changeable. So um, I've got a lot of different uh, columns over here. And as I add more, this can just kind of get a little bit hectic. So I definitely recommend turn on horizontal scrolling. Um, so this is just going to give us the ability to add more things without, um, you know, clogging up the view here. I'll just be able to, uh, to side scroll. And we can see um, I can add a formula column as well. Um, one of the interesting things that we can do um, with this is we can basically ask a question like, do these things match? So I can say something like, um, if we have an end date and that end date is beyond the fixed version, uh, Umax buy. Umax buy is saying find the biggest one. So what I'm doing is I'm finding the biggest fixed version by release date. So the latest release date, and then grab that release date. Um, and if it is, if I do have an end date that is past that release date, then I'm just going to return a one. Um, and ah, don't have any. I I definitely definitely had some. Um, just go to my multi project. Um, so this is a different structure that should look ah cloud and uh, cloud and STR instead of cloud and Mars. Um, so this is a very similar looking structure. Sorry for the context switch there. Um, but um, this one, I do have some end dates, and they are actually doing what I think they're doing. So let's just add that additional project right here. I'm going to cloud that STR project. Oh, nope not the project I was looking to add. And now, uh, in addition to Mars and Cloud, we also have our structure project. And in our structure project, we should find some that match this formula. Um, let me just double check here. End date. So we do have some end dates, and we do have this formula. Um, I guess it's just not liking me today. Um, so formulas can definitely be a little bit difficult to, uh, to write on the fly. I didn't want to spend too much time here on this, um, but let's just switch to, uh, to easy mode here. At the bottom, we have this whole um, section of, uh, of calculated columns. I mentioned the rice column. I mentioned the uh, WSJF column. Um, so we can do something like this. Um, where we calculate, you know, weightest, shortest job first. It's looking for some different fields, so I'm going to need to um, define those. Um, but this basically gives me a fully working formula with comments. So this is like a nice big comments to explain. Um, and then, you know, I'm doing a little bit of calculation. So like my marketing value has this marketability field, and depending on whether it's medium or high, you know, we're giving them different values. Same with the impact factor. We're basically translating these um, strings into numbers to calculate this value. Um, so yeah, apologies, I haven't gotten a super exciting uh, formula working. Uh, let's, 
let's just switch this. So I'll make this a much, much simpler formula and say, if the ends date is uh, greater than now, then we're gonna return a one. So we've got some end dates in the future. This is an end date in the future. And now if we sum over sub items, we can see how many items are expected to be um, late or actually, no, we probably wanna do the opposite. Um, if the end date is in the past. So if the end date is in the past, then um, you know this is overdue. So we've got six items that are overdue. I can even give this a name here oh. and say that this is an over. Ah, oh, why is it not liking me? Overdue formula. Um, and we can see in each project, it'll tell me how many items I have overdue. It looks like there's just some in the structure one. And of course, this is going to update in real time. So if I give this a due date of yesterday or rather an end date of yesterday, um, now it's going to match that formula. And you can see that we um, bump up the, uh, the count to seven. So um, the other thing that I wanted to mention is sometimes we get into a situation where we want to create a um, lot of, uh, sorry, a level of hierarchy above epic. Um, often the epic story subtask hierarchy is not quite enough. Um, so we wanna have something above epic to group items into a um, sort of larger paradigm. Um, I think that's really great. Um, often fixed version can be that grouping, nothing wrong with, uh, with that as a choice, but we can also do that with um, a custom link or and or a custom issue type. So um, if I go, and decide to group, not filter. I can uh, group, and there's multiple different things that I can group here. So I can group by issue links. So if I have like a link set up where my Epic is implemented or my Epic implements some higher level item, that's valid. Um, but we can also do it based on a field. And one of those fields is of course going to be the parent issue from advanced roadmaps. So if you're using advanced roadmaps, we have some good um, you know, ability to integrate with, uh, with that as well. But um, let's go over to a different structure. And actually, I will just create a new structure here. So I can go to create a new structure. Um, and this new structure is going to be my portfolio overview. And we're going to create a very high level view. Now, normally, I would probably want to share this with people. So be aware of this um, share with nobody is the default. Um, just so if we're mucking about with a structure, we're not uh, you know, clogging up everyone else's view. But this is a structure that probably everyone would want to see, you know, this top level overview. So um, I have two different issue types that I've created above Epic. One of them is a uh, theme and the other one is an initiative. This is a uh, way that I see of doing this uh, pretty commonly. So I'll say project equals uh, business initiatives and type equals theme. So, um, Yep, I've literally got two items here. Um, and uh, from here, I can actually make a pretty interesting structure with just one more rule. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna extend and I'm gonna extend on these linked items. Um, implements is the link that I've got here. And this is a custom link type. But again, you know, if we're using some of the built-in like blocks or clones, that's fine. If we're using a custom link type, that's also fine. Um, and then I mentioned before this idea of levels. We can always think of level one as the insert. So here, this is my level one. And um, what we're saying is how deep do we want this hierarchy to go? So we've got a default of levels one through five. Um, and interestingly enough, this is not going to create five levels of hierarchy. It's actually gonna create six. Um, Cause on level five, we check if we're gonna create the next level and extends to the next level. So if I change this to three, um, I'm going to at most have a four level hierarchy here. Yep, so I've got uh, some epics linked directly underneath as well as some initiatives, um, which is a little bit strange. Um, but again, one, two, three, and four levels of hierarchy, just as I expected. And again, one of my favorite little tricks here is the simplest formula you can write is just the word level. Um, and so level is just gonna tell us what level we're on. And now you can see one, two, three, and four. This is my deepest child. This is on level four. Um, you know, as I said before, my insert is always going to be level one. Um, 
but yeah, I actually have some more themes. So I think I'm just gonna delete this business initiative, just insert all of my themes. Um, that doesn't actually add anymore. That's interesting. Um, but um, from here, maybe I want to extend um, those child items underneath the, um, the stories and whatnot. Um, this is actually, oh, you know what it is? I did this backwards. Parent is implemented by child. That's what I did wrong. I had it pointing at the wrong direction. This is much more what I wanted to see here. So you can see that I've got my themes and then my initiatives underneath. And then my initiatives break down to my uh, my epics. Um, this is kind of a weird relationship. I wouldn't expect that to be there. And you can see I just deleted that, but I didn't remove it from the structure. We can still see that my extensions item is, is here. Um, I just removed the link. Um, so I, I basically unlink them from that item. The other thing worth mentioning is there's nothing strictly forcing um, different issues on different levels. There's nothing to say that I can't say, oh, this, this epic directly links to the theme. I wouldn't want to do that. I, I don't think that that's a good way of, uh, of organizing this, but it is a valid way of doing it. Um, so I'm just following my links. You can see that they go across projects. So I've got my in business initiative project here for my high level items. And then we break down into our actual um, individual projects. And then again, here I've got my structure. Um, Tableau integration, and my testy customizable status settings. So, so this is another cross-project relationship here. In general, I wouldn't want to see an epic breaking down into another epic. This is, again, kind of a weird edge case. But sometimes you find this epic is huge, and it's not actually epic size. So maybe we need to break it down into some other items. And if I select this row right here, and then go and create an item, and just hit the Enter key right there to bring up the, uh, the creation dialog, so I'm going to say I'm going to create a structure item, um, and that structure item is going to be an epic. Um, and this is going to be some new Tableau integration features. Um, and what's going to happen is structure is smart enough to know. Um, yeah, I shouldn't just retype this. I'm just going to copy it. Um, so now that I've got all my fields filled out, it's going to allow me to create this. And it's not just going to create this item, it's going to create it right where I have it in the board. So it creates it, and then it creates the link. And you can see that I've got that issue link. So it is being implemented um, by that parent epic here. So a lot of flexibility for um, you know, building and organizing our work here. The other thing worth mentioning is we have this little um, one item with duplicates found. So we can see that our Tableau integration appears in here twice. Um, if you click on this, it gives us the option we can filter so that way I can find, um, you know, my one or rather two copies of the same issue. Um, if I want to filter them out. I turn this mark duplicates on and basically always leave it as on. And the idea is even if you have zero duplicates in the board, it's still nice um, because I can just remove this right now. Now I will have zero duplicates in the board. Um, but if I do create a new link or create something that duplicates issues in the board, um, I'll know, and it'll immediately have that little X2 uh, notification next to it. Um, yeah, other than that, um, I think I just had one more structure that I wanted to, uh, to show. I realized that um, we've been talking a lot about organizing work, whether at you know the individual team level or here where we're kind of at a higher portfolio level. Um, there's a lot of flexibility for, for doing these things, and this is probably the more common use case for a structure, but um, just for fun, I wanted to um, show a completely different way of, uh, of working with structure. Um, so we're going to create another structure, and um, this one is going to be an alert structure. Um, so an alert structure is a structure that is usually empty. Uh, we expect it to be empty most of the time. And when I add my insert, hopefully this will become clear. So if I say something like assignee is empty and uh, priority is critical, uh, no, I don't mean is, I mean equals uh, highest. So yeah, I'm saying this is an unassigned issue of the highest priority and it was created 
within the last two days. So this is a recently created unassigned high priority issue. And I create, and we can see um, I don't have anything in the structure. And this is exactly what I intend. Um, but this means if somebody does create an issue, and, and I'll create an issue right now, we'll say that this is a bug. Um, critical hotfix bug needs attention. Um, and we'll say that its priority is highest. It's got that highest priority. Um, and now I created this, it doesn't have an assigning because I didn't fill that field out. And now this item should show up here. Uh, Sorry, is empty. Huh. And it's not created wrong. There we go. I guess my created filter was not what I thought it was. Um, so now I've got this, you know, really highly alerting, needs my attention sort of bug. And if I simply add my assignee column, um, as soon as I assign this to somebody, it's no longer matching the filter. It's it's no longer critical. Um, you know, now that's Nick's problem. So, uh, you know, we'll let him deal with that. Um, so this becomes really, really nice if we want to, um, you know, put this on a dashboard. We can definitely, um, you know, insert that. So if we go to, um, yeah, my first dashboard over here, um, I can edit and add this gadget. And uh, yeah, I've got a structure gadget over here, but I will add, whoop, add gadget is doing nothing. Anyways, uh, I guess I can hypothetically change this one to use a different structure, but um, sorry, we don't need to dig too deep into this right now. Um, but, um, but yeah, I, I definitely think of the alert structure as a really nice use case for that. Um, so that way things don't slip through the cracks. We don't accidentally miss items that are, um, you know, very high priority and, and things like that. But um, it looks like we've got about 20 minutes left. I definitely want to give you folks uh, time to uh, ask those questions and, and make sure we, uh, we get a chance to answer as many of them as we can. Yes, and we have lots of questions. Um, just following up on the latest structure, alert structure, uh, what is the, the refresh cycle uh, on that structure? How many seconds? Five, ten? Uh, I don't, I don't know. Um, I know that it is listening for updates, um, but I, I don't know the exact background. I would expect it to be five to ten seconds. It's, it's very, very short. Um, you know, if, if it, if it takes a full minute for that issue to show up, I mean, I would, I would be surprised. All right. Um, this is a good question. Uh, can structures can be exported into Excel for controlling purposes? That is a great question. And yes, we can. So we have this export, we export to Excel. Um, there's a couple of really nice things about that that I do want to mention here. So if I add some columns here, like assignee, um, you know, reporter, um, things like that, I can add a bunch of information here. And then um, when I export, and actually I'll collapse the whole structure here. So I collapse the whole structure, except for this top one here, extension structure Gantt. When I export, um, it's going to keep exactly these issues in exactly this order with exactly these columns. And then I'll just open it up here. It'll also keep these collapsible sections and subsections, which I find really, really nice. Um, not sure why. Uh, Excel is always a little bit slow for me because I'm on a Mac, um, but it will get here. Oh, great. I've got to update my terms of use. All right, great. So now we've got, um, yep, and we can see extensions, structure, Gantt, and milestones. It, it, you know, it opened exactly those collapsible sections and nothing else. And we have exactly these things in this exact order. The only thing we don't get is the progress bar turns into a number, which is basically the exact same as if I did this. Um, so we don't get that nice green bar, but everything else is, is pretty much a perfect one-to-one. -one. Um, so um, yeah, I would, I would definitely um, you know, export structures. Um, and it's basically the only way to freeze this information in time. Structures always listening for these updates, you know, these assignees, reporters, status, any of these fields that change will be um, the newest value because we're never looking at an outer date structure. But if we export it, you know, we can see what that looked like a month ago. Awesome. Uh, just following up on, on the same subject, do we have a size limit for export? 
No, we do not have a size limit for the export. Um, we do have a size limit for the structure. Um, so the structure itself is limited to 10,000 issues on cloud. Um, we're actually, um, we, we currently have a program where we're allowing some customers to increase that limit, but that is something that we're working on uh, on increasing. So um, if you want to create a structure with more than 10,000 issues on cloud, please uh, reach out and, uh, and we can see about extending that limit for you. All right. Um, do we have a way to filter and visualize value is blocked by issues from from linked issues in a structure column? So basically saying that showing blocked by in a column. Yeah. So we don't have a way to do that on cloud, unfortunately. Um, so there's not um, a, a solution for that. We can, of course, include those items in the structure. So if I want, I can say. Um, you know, let's extend by linked items, blocks, uh, parent is blocked by child. And I'll even say we're only going to do this on like levels three to six. Um, and now um, I should be showing some blockers. So yeah, we've got some epics blocking some other epics. And now this is my dependency chain. Um, so um, yeah, I mean, we can we can show them in the structure, but we can't um, show them in a column. The good news is if you're on-prem, this is really, really easy to do on-prem. So uh, let's just do a quick jump over here to the documentation. And we have a sample formulas page, if I can spell sample correctly. Um, okay, I guess it's not showing the first name. So this is... Yeah, this says cloud, but it's actually not cloud. And if you see, we've got a whole section on issue links. So, um, you know, we can, yeah, show issues blocking the current issue. This is the exact example. Um, you know, we're filtering for the type equals blocks and the destination is the current issue. So this is something that's really easy to do on-prem. You will be able to do it on cloud in a future version, um, but um, I, I would expect that to be available um, like maybe Q1 next year. Um, so uh, yeah, don't don't hold your breath. Awesome. Is there temp data uh, that can be queried and, and use the structure? So what kind of information from Tempo can we uh, access? Yeah, so there's quite a few um, fields from Tempo. So Tempo time tracking is going to be using, you know, our original estimate and our time spent fields. So these are um, naturally you know, these are JIRA fields that are shared with, with both tempo and structure is the way that we can think of them. Um, we also have, um, is there, I don't think, that's just call it count. It's not a, oh, um, I, oh I, I think I don't have tempo installed on this instance, but there is a tempo account um, that can also be accessed. Um, I wanna say that there's a, a few other fields, but as a general rule, if, if these are actual fields in JIRA, um, they're definitely going to be accessible by structure, um, and uh, we're definitely working on increasing the uh, interconnectivity between the Tempo apps and the and the structure ALM apps. Yeah, I think the Tempo Teams is is definitely the one we can access. Yeah, Tempo Teams. By... That, was the one I was looking, that I was thinking of. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, is there any API so access into the structure through the API? Is it possible? Yeah, um, we have an API on uh, on the server and data center version. Um, I don't believe that there's a publicly available API on um, cloud as of yet. But again, everything on the uh, server version um, we intend to put into the cloud version. So there there will be a publicly available API in a in a future version. Right. This is. Really interesting question. Do we have a way to manage capacity in structure without using tempo? Um, not specifically, I guess. Um, so we can definitely, um, you know, do things. So like, you know, if we go back to my sprint reporting structure, um, you know, I can see, you know, how much capacity I have in each individual sprint, you know, if I collapse these all, you know, I can see I've got between like two and three ish weeks on all of my individual sprints. Um, you know, we could obviously write a formula that says, um, you know, the original estimate sum is less than, um, you know, 
some value. Um, and then we could do it, do, do something like this. Um, but um, we don't have, um, you know, a way to say, oh, this team has this capacity and that team has that capacity um, without getting into Gantt. Um, so we have the structured Gantt plugin. That's basically um, what I would use for uh, managing capacity planning and, of course, um, building those Gantt chart visualizations. But there's nothing inherent to structure for, uh, for doing that resource planning. All right. Uh, cool. Um, the next question, again, about alert structure. Uh, can we create different alerts on the same structure and somehow group those? Yeah, yeah, we can definitely do that. That's a great idea. So I, I, I'm, I'm a little bit embarrassed that I did not think of this before. Um, but yeah, so if we want, um, you know, we can say, uh, let's create multiple fields here. And this is my high priority alerts. And in my high priority alerts, I'll have this like critical one. And then maybe I can create another folder and say, you know, medium alerts. Um, and in this one, oh, I guess I probably want this to be on the top level again. Oh. Yeah. Um, and in this one, I can insert a different set of JQL and say, you know, uh, no, actually, I didn't want to do that. But I could, I could basically insert another rule with its own JQL and, and say, you know, assignee is empty and priority is, uh, I don't know, I guess medium so I can say um, you know if these lower priority but still um, you know oh wow apparently I have a lot more issues in uh, in that priority than uh, and I thought and I'm guessing medium is the default so if I just change this to high I'll have one or fewer yeah so yeah I've got like one item now and now I put this into this folder and so now I've got you know this alert is in this folder and this alert is in this folder. And of course we can add as many of these as we want. So if we had different criteria, different alerts, maybe we're looking for different things and different projects, um, those are all gonna be valid. All right, thank you. Um, this is also a good one. Um, moving items in structure always seems to have an error. What, what can help with what's going on there? <laughs> um, well, that is a very open-ended question. Um, so I, <laughs> there's a lot of things that, uh, that could be uh, happening there. So um, there, the first thing I would check is, are we allowed to do this? So like, I've got my blocks links here. I've got my moving items and structure is allowed. So if this is off, I'm not going to be able to drag and drop. I'm going to be getting an error. And we can see this right now. I'll turn this off. I try to say, this is actually blocking this one. And it says, these changes are not allowed. So this is a very generic error message that we might expect to get. Um, the other error message that we can get is if we split the view. So if I split the view over here and I find some issue like technical debt, we know that this story is not in this view. And if I say, oh, actually I wanna link this to, uh, to that epic over there, um, it's gonna say this is not allowed. And, and that's just because we can't just add items you know the items that are in here are based on these rules um and uh you know we we don't have the ability to uh to add items to a, a jql query insert um the other thing i guess um could be that um we we don't have permissions so maybe the change is valid in structure like i can create the blocking link but i don't have permission to update this issue so that that might also throw an error um but um yeah, I mean, I, I guess I would say, um, you know, check out this little help button right here. Um, you know, we've got the ability to contact support um, and, and maybe, you know, you can look at the documentation, find that particular error message and, uh, and see what's going on. But um, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not as simple as this one error is always caused by this thing. There's, there's quite a few different possibilities there. It is indeed. Um, Another good one. Uh, is there a way to create issue hierarchy without links? Yeah. So, um, you know, we've got a lot of different ways of connecting issues in um, JIRA. And um, do, I guess, what's the project here? So, yeah, here they happen to be, um, you know, those epics and, uh, and stories and subtasks. 
Um, those aren't linked with a link. Um, they actually have a field called epic. Uh, oh, it's called epic link, but I guess I can't add it, um, which is basically defining this relationship. Um, the other way is um, the parent link, um, which I mentioned before. You know, if we want to group by that parent link, this I find, or we, it's called parent issue here, um, but it, the, the field is actually called parent link. Um, which is a little bit confusing because it's not a link. Um, so we can use that as well. I, I think those are the only ways that we can connect issues other than uh, other than linking. But structure wants to be as flexible as possible. So um, you know, if you don't want to use links, if, if there's some other way that you'd like to connect issues into a hierarchy and we can't, we'd, we'd love to hear your use case. All right, thank you. Um, another one is, uh... Can rank work when we use filters? Yes, yes. So rank will work um, even if we use filters. Um, it's it's not really going to have any effect here. So um, what's happening is, you know, we'll order by rank. I'll do it on all levels. So now this project is ordered by rank. And if I do something like filtering, and, and this is probably the most common filter I see, something like this. Um, you know, I don't want to see anything that's done. I just want to see my in progress work. Um, so yeah, this isn't really going to have any sort of problem. Um, but this is because we're filtering these issues first and then we're sorting them afterwards. So, um, the, um, the issues that are missing don't really have any effect on the rank. And also rank is intended to always work. If there's one item in the board or uh, 10,000 items in the board or any number in between, rank is, is not going to have any issue sorting because it's, it's designed to always have a deterministic sort order. All right, awesome. Um, can you view and structure all the projects in one call to see the work across the time? Yeah, I mean, so most of mine, I've been saying, you know, these particular projects, but there's no reason that I have to. I can just say, give me all the epics. I don't care what project they're in. And now we're going to see basically every project that has an epic. So right now it's structure and structure cloud. And now we see I've got deliver, I've got Mars, I've got structure, uh, I've got Gantt, I've got pages, I've got testing. All of these are projects with um, you know individual um, epics. And the only one that doesn't show up, I think, is... Um, the business initiatives, because there are no epics in there. There's only themes and initiatives. So, um, you know, this one isn't showing up because, well, there's no epics related there. But um, structure doesn't care what, uh, you know, project these uh, these items are in. Cross project links, relationships, et cetera, are, are all going to play very nicely. Cool. My issues are grouped by epics, but uh, the story points only show if I expand the epics. Is there a way to show the sum of points under the epic in this view? Yeah, of course. So when we have story points, um, we're just showing you know the the individual value. So you can see none of my groups have um, individual story points. But when I open them, I see the story points. So so this is a, hopefully the exact thing that you're describing. You know, when I open them, I see story points, and when they're collapsed, they're not there. All you need to do is click sum over sub items, and now we're rolling them up. So we can see that we've got 37 story points in structure Gantt and 97 in structure cloud. And uh, I do have one duplicate in the board, so I might want to exclude duplicates to make sure that I'm counting these correctly. And it looks like those numbers did change. So, um, so yeah, but all, all you need to do is modify the column a little bit. Awesome. Is it possible to build a structure from the lower level, meaning starting from the story up to epic feature initiatives? Yeah, yeah, let's do that right now. Um, so I can create a new structure and I'll call this one upside down. And um, yeah, so we can start by inserting items. Um, so I'll say type equals story and epic, then. epic link is not empty. Um, so these are stories that are linked to an epic. So now I get a bunch of stories. Then from there, I group them up to their epic. So now I've got some epics. And then I can keep doing this. And so I will add another grouper by links, because we talked about before, I have that implements link. Um, and so parent is implemented by sub issue. Um, 
need to, yep. And because here my epics are groups, I need to tell my implements to consider other groups. Um, so now that it considers the epics, oh, did it not? What? You probably need to flip the order of the groupings, maybe. Oh, yeah, that's probably it. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> um, so yeah, so and then, of course, this is only going up one level just to the initiative. So I might need to go another level and group up by it again to get up to the um, initiative uh, theme level. Um, so um, basically, the only difference between grouping and extending is extending, we can create multiple levels at once. Grouping, we always create one level. But they both work the same, you know, whether we're grouping by those links or extending by those links, we're doing the same thing. It's just whether we're doing one or, or many. Um, but yeah, all of these things should work in either direction. It's often um, a little bit easier and simpler to build from the top down, but there's no reason that we can't build from the bottom up. Awesome. Um, we have a question on the formula. So uh, is there a way to highlight or color columns depending on some business criteria? For example, if we have a column showing due date, is it possible to highlight overdue with some red or other colors? Yes, yes, we do. So we, we have a great way of doing that. Um, it is actually, so it's a little bit different on uh, on the different ones. It's called Markdown on Cloud. Um, so we can go to this Markdown in formula columns. Um, <laughs> of course, this goes to nothing. Come on. Uh, there is a Markdown in formula right. columns uh, option. So, oh, wow. Not, uh, for whatever reason it does. Oh, this is. This is that data center, yes. Yeah, okay. So now we have markdown and formula columns. Thank you. There we go. So yeah, so this is like, you can see I've got my at risk, my normal, uh, my awesome. Um, and then here is um, some examples of uh, of how to do that. Um, but um, yeah, uh, we can change background color, text color. Um, I don't necessarily recommend inserting emojis, but there's a lot of cool things, you know, like this red flag can be um, really uh, helpful. Um, these do become a little bit complicated, so I wouldn't try to uh, try to build them right now, but we can just copy and paste this one. And so we'll see we create different colors based on uh, what is going on. And of course, this is just going to work. I'm just going to be able to paste this here um, and it'll play pretty nicely. The only thing they have to do after pasting is make sure you change this format to markdown. So if I don't do that, I get this text panel, something, you know, whatever. As soon as I change this to markdown, it's going to interpret it. And now we can see these ones need due date. So I haven't, uh, I haven't filled in a due date for it looks like any of these items. Um, so it's kind of getting an error message, but um, yeah, if the due date's in the past, we're graying it red. If the due date is within the or in the next seven days, we'll color it green because it needs to be done soon. And if there's um, more than seven days, if we got more than a week, then it's just a smile. So you know we're good. We've got plenty of time. And then this is our else condition needs due date is is what we're getting to because we don't have um, this setup. But um, but yeah, there's a lot of really cool things that you can do with um, coloring. I often think of it as kind of gamification. You know, if you're making a bar green or red or whatever, you're going to encourage and discourage certain behavior um, in your instance. All right, cool. Thank you. We are on the brink of the hour, so we probably stop here. Uh, all the questions we have in our Q&A section, we will put everything together, we'll answer the ones we haven't answered, and we'll send it in the follow-up email. So don't worry, you, you'll get the answers to your questions. Thank you everyone for coming and joining our webinar. Uh, we have uh, another one in a week's time. Uh, meanwhile, we have some resources you can uh, access to and ask, ask questions directly. Um, so feel free to, to connect to us. Uh, thank you, Nick, uh, for a great presentation. And thank you everyone and have a nice day. Bye-bye.